Hey, what's up Kingdom family? So uh, my name is Sean and this is my YouTube channel Kingdom Crafter and uh, if you're not necessarily uh, you know part of that the kingdom or a believer uh, this is still gonna pertain to you if you're um, into screen printing if you're looking to see how to capture half tones and uh, you're looking to build your own light box uh, basically here comes my cat go away kitty go Psst. get out of here she used to be real quiet and she's gotten really loud in her older age hold on a second <laughs> Okay, so, um, so yeah, basically, um, this is just kind of a crafting channel. I'm a screen printer. I do a lot of different things. Um, I work with leather. You know, I do some design work. Um, I just kind of all around, you know, I do welding, electrical, all kinds of framing. Um, I just like art. I like crafting. I like building things with my hands. And um, I'm just trying to, you know, show you what I've learned so far. And uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about or not a little bit a lot about uh screen printing and how you would capture half tone this is um one of the one of the shirts that i print um it's got you know a little bible verse i sell this on my website prodigal son apparel uh be still and know that i am god um and so this is one of my original designs and um, if you look at it closely and you see all the little details and the half tones and the gradients that are happening in in the uh, in the design um, you can't really necessarily capture that with your standard light box um, you definitely need a, one of these um, it's my uh, vacuum blanket uh, vacuum assisted LED light box and uh, today basically what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to build one of these. So uh, before we get started let me uh, just take a moment to do a little self-promotion so if you like what you see here if, uh, if you're into doing things kind of on a budget trying to uh, just getting started and, and you need a little bit of direction uh, I would love it if you would hit that like button subscribe button more importantly do the subscribe and ring that bell because that bell is everything in youtube right now so um you know i'm just kind of getting started with the youtube channel i'm going to be posting a whole lot more uh videos on um, this channel is you know primarily uh just teaching you how to how to do a lot of things yourself and and for crafters screen printers construction workers uh people that want to be inspired and be taught uh, that's what i'm here for so uh, that's what it's about thank you all right check it out so this is my diy uh, do-it-yourself vacuum exposure unit um, and it's the led version i originally had fluorescence in there but i uh, just kind of took that system out and uh, put led strips and now i can burn screens in 16 seconds capturing half tones with the vacuum blanket uh, I, I did this build for about 400 dollars, and i want to show you uh, what i did so you can build your own or just kind of take some ideas from from what I did here and, and run with it and uh, do your own thing. So um, if you'd like to know exactly how to build a uh, vacuum exposure unit LED for less than five hundred dollars, uh, just stick around. You know, these sell new for, you know, probably starting at about a thousand on up and um, you can build a, the exact same thing. It may not be as pretty as what you buy online, but this one, uh, you know, for as far as a uh, DIYs, I think this one's kind of right up there with the best. All right, we're going to start with the basics here. Um, if I rush through things, you know, feel free to comment below and I'll try to address your questions. Um, so I'm kind of doing this impromptu. I had to burn some screens today and somebody previously asked me, you know, how I built my unit and I told him I'd do a video on it. That was weeks ago and so I'm kind of falling behind on that. So I wanted to get this done. And so I might rush through things a little bit. If I do, if you have any questions, comment below and I'll, I'll answer those. Um, so let, let's start from the basics. Basically, you know, the first thing you need is obviously a shell or some type of box. Um, you know, I was trying to think of all types of ways to do it, build it out of plywood, you know. Um, I thought that would be kind of bulky and, and just ugly, you know, and uh, considered, you know, having something fabricated, but that gets costly. Um, I was on a job one day and, and they had these uh, cabinets they were getting rid of and it just popped into my head, man, that would be perfect for the shell I need. Um, so the cabinet that I picked up here, 
It looks like it's a three foot cabinet. I think it's three by four. Um, it's all kind of coming back to me because it's been a while since I built this. So, you know, three by, um, well, three and a half tall cabinet. And if you can imagine this thing standing up, this being the bottom, um, and what I ended up doing is using the shelves inside because they're the perfect size to build the platform for my LED uh, strips there. So um, what you can't see because I did, you know, sheet it with a piece of metal is that there's three shelves side by side that I screw together. This is the right one. There's one in the middle and then there's one in the left. And those are basically essentially, um, you can't really see from here, but they are screwed together. Maybe I'll pop the side open so you can get a better look at that. So I use the three shells as my platform. And what I did, I basically just screwed three carriage bolts through. Um, you know, they're a pretty good size. It's That looks like it's about one inch on the outside. So they're probably, you know, half inch thick. The carriage bolts are about two two inches long and I basically just have a, a you know the bolt and the nut on the opposite side of, of the metal here and you know I've got three of them in place on the front and then uh, I don't really need to show you but I've got three in the back and that's what's holding up my shelving so that's that's the essential there that's basically your shell um, once you have your shell created um, what I did is I got some L channel and I, I got that um, it's, it's basically aluminum L channel and I measured down I figured out what the diameter of my my window or my glass was going to be and that's three eighths so I measured down three eighths of an inch and I put aluminum L channel around the whole perimeter and I basically I just screwed the aluminum L channel straight to the cabinet from the inside and you know I probably hit it every I don't know every 12 inches or so there's another screw um, there's the first screw yeah you can kind of see them all along so basically that is what's holding up my glass is that aluminum L channel I chose to go with aluminum because it's a little bit lighter than steel um, and you know, easier to drill through and all those good things. And then once I had that, once I had the, let me back up here. Once I had the aluminum ch um, L strip in place, you know, to hold my glass up, I basically just bought some door sealer here. It's just kind of a foam sealer, cut it to fit. And that's going on the perimeter of my L channel. So my glass will sit right on top of that and that'll give it a nice airtight um, seal because basically if you have a vacuum unit everything needs to be airtight so um, so after that basically what I did is I you know I got my measurements um, I spoke to a glass company locally and basically had them cut me a piece of 3 8 glass you want something that's not gonna break uh, tempered glass you know so just be real specific with the glass company um, that was one of the larger cost of the build was a glass and um yeah i'd say that was the biggest cost but you know necessary so um quick note on the vacuum blanket i originally did a lot of research what's going to work the best neoprene seemed to keep coming up so i purchased some neoprene um sheeting and it was a softer type fabric like you'd see in a wetsuit um, it was coated on one side and then the other side was just kind of the the standard neoprene um, i put that in and I used it about 10 times before I ended up ripping a hole in one of the corners. Um, so the neoprene turned out to be kind of a fail. You know, I, there, I might have, you know, just gotten the wrong type of neoprene, but originally when, during my research, that was, that's what was coming up. So I started searching around and on eBay, basically Google search, you know, uh, screen printing exposure blanket, this came up on eBay. And uh, it was basically guaranteed that, you know, it's durable and, and perfect for the job. So I gave it a shot and it's been perfect. hundred, you know, I've hundreds of screens later, no tear, not that much wear. I mean, it's durable. It's more of a, a rubber type material. Um, you know, you can 
push on it pretty well and it's not going to rip. Um, so it's held up and I'm really happy with it. I'll, I'll post a link. It was quite a while ago that I purchased that. So, you know, the same seller may not be on eBay, but um, just in hindsight, I would avoid the neoprene, like the uh, wetsuit type of neoprene and go with something that's a little more rubberized or specific for um, a vacuum exposure unit. So, um, so that's my lid and basically you can see, I, um, you know, you you'll just have to get creative with the lid is all I can say about it. I do have some welding skills and basically I was able to weld some one inch, um, one inch square tubing and I was able to weld that kind of sand it and paint it. So I know not everybody's going to have access to a welder. So I'm sure you can, you know, come up with something creative to build this, you know, possibly with some some wood and just make sure you seal all of your ends. It'd probably have to be like a hardwood um, so it doesn't bow and that sort of thing. Um, but basically, you know, I made this frame that's the same size as the perimeter of my cabinet. And you can see I also use the same type of um, sealant that you'd use around your door so when those squish together and you know I've got these cheap little latches you can find these anywhere Amazon just Google latch that gives you a nice tight seal um, so there's you know a ver variety of latches um, I'll see if I can find the receipt and post that in the description below but um, that you can just kind of get creative with and and find anything that's gonna kind of pull pull the the top down and you can see this is completely adjustable so I mean, it did take a little bit of you know tweaking I've got some washers behind it just to get everything squared up um, but you do what you have to to make it work so yeah I've got a nice tight seal around everything um, another thing I want to mention is on the glass after um, after I set the glass down, I did put a silicone bead around the whole thing um, to guarantee that no air would escape into the cabinet, you know, when I turn the vacuum on. So, um, all right, let's go to the next step. Okay, so next step is, let's spend a little more time on this blanket here. So, um, so yeah, I, I bought the, you know, the, the vacuum blanket. And basically, um, what I did is I just cut it you know, a little long initially because um, I ended up taking my knife right across this as a straight edge and just cut the excess off. So you cut, you know, you definitely want to buy extra. But what 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 I have here is I also um, cut some L channel. Now this is metal; it's different from what I use below the aluminum. But I use some some metal L channel. I did have to get kind of creative with my corner cuts here. You can see this one's overlapping. So I've got it coming in and then I've got a 45 there. Um, and basically this L channel is also one inch. You know, my square tubing was one inch. This is one inch. And I, you know, was careful to, to kind of sand my edges and everything so that it wouldn't rip this uh, rubber blanket and, um, and threw some paint on it. But basically my blanket wraps under this L channel and it goes to the outer edge. I screwed this down, you know, every six inches or so. And then once this was screwed down, I, I've actually put a bead of silicone down this whole thing, um, top and front, or just in between the uh, the rubber and this this L bracket here, or this L channel, and uh, screwed it down, cut off my excess rubber, and just did that around all four sides. And, um, and so that's basically how I mounted my... <clears throat> my top here um in hindsight i wish i got longer yeah hydraulic opener and this just wasn't sufficient it, i didn't do a whole lot of research i just you know ended up on amazon like yeah that looks like that'll work and bought two of them and you know they're kind of weak uh they're not weak they're just undersized and so they don't do what i was hoping um, they would help with opening you know i was hoping i could open it you know maybe a quarter of the way and then that kicked in but it doesn't um what it does do is keep the back from just flinging all the way all the way back because i've got three hinges in the back 
um, just out of my junk drawer, real cheap hinges, you know, two on the end, one in the middle. And uh, that's essentially holding the door on are these hydraulic uh, springs or closures, whatever you want to call them. And so, uh, so yeah, we'll go from the, from that to what we're, since we're back here, let's take a look at this vacuum system I got. Uh, first thing I'm going to say is you don't need this valve. Um, this in hindsight, uh, was just kind of unnecessary. I think I actually had it in one, one of my, uh, just junk drawers in my, my garage, something that I thought maybe I could use. It's a quarter inch and I threw it in there, you know, hoping that once I got the vacuum to a certain point, I could shut the valve off and it would just trap the air. Um, it doesn't really work like that. You have to keep the vacuum unit going the whole time. And so, um, this is not needed. Don't go out and get a ball valve. So <clears throat> what I have here, as far as the compressor goes, um, got this at Harbor Freight. It is a Zenny one stage vacuum pump, 3.5 CFM. If I remember right, this is about $60. I'll put a link below. Um, basically you come off the top of this. I also got this hose and this came off of like a, uh, just a, uh, general test kit for AC units. Um, and it came with the hose. I believe I cut one end off and just put a hose clamp straight to the vacuum unit here. Um, it came with all these fittings. Um, so I just, you know, put a hose clamp that's, that's done the job. I haven't had any issues with it leaking there. It does look like my hose is getting a little worn out over time. Um, but the hose basically goes up and it comes, the other end of the hose comes with this, you know, this female, um, this female nut here. It's kind of like a compression, but it does have some swivel action to it. Um, so this is where you have to get creative. Go, take this to Home Depot. That's what I did. And basically, um, get yourself some adapters. This might be, you know, it looks like I got a quarter inch there. And then I have quarter inch nipple going all the way through the frame to the bottom of the uh, vacuum blanket. We'll open that up and look at that. But um, I know this is all quarter inch here. You might have to get creative, uh, but that actually looks like it's just quarter inch and I just have a bunch of Teflon tape right around it. So quarter inch nipple uh, might go straight to this, this fitting that comes with your with your uh, kit from Harbor Freight. So um, like I said, you just have to take this to Home Depot or Lowe's or you know Ace, wherever you go, and just uh, get creative. Um, basically what I did is I drilled a hole. You know, imagine this is gone. This could just be a straight nipple going all the way through. Got a little O-ring, it's kind of hard to see. Got a little O-ring there to seal things on this end. And then when we open it up, <laughs> I've got the back end of the nipple um, and what I have is a three ace cap that I have and the cap is doing two things. One, it's holding that nipple into place. You can see I've got an O-ring. Let's see, let's zoom in there. I've got a, it doesn't look pretty, but I've got another O-ring underneath the cap. That's basically holding that nipple in place. Um, you might be able to see inside. There's the end of the nipple, that's the threads there. And what I did with the cap is I just drilled two holes and just kind of bored that section out. But um, basically, so what's gonna happen is, you know, you can see you've got, you know, your air pulling through this hole here, sucking all the air out from between your blanket and the glass. And that's gonna give you your, your um, just complete darkness. Um, so basically, like I said, yeah, got my safe light. So you can, you know, prepare your screen and, you know, get your your registration template and everything in place, get that all lined up. So you can work under the safe light, the yellow light, without doing any harm to your screen. Throw that in there. Watch that. All right, now I got an airtight seal going around the whole thing. Um, so what I would do is turn my safe light off. I got my vacuum on. Um, basically, you can see it's sucking all the air out of that unit. You can even see the string that I just kind of threw in there. Um, 
what I'll do is flip my, my third switch. Pow, that sets up my timer, 16 seconds. Burn time with the LED is phenomenal. It used to be like two minutes and 30 seconds. Um, it's a fraction of the time. The LED is definitely the way to go. And, uh, and my timer automatically kicks off. 16 seconds, mine is out. Boom, that'd be done. All right, so you you got the kind of once over the quick tour of you know the 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 build I did here and and so I'm actually gonna run it through some screens real quick and and do a little filming of that. Um, you know I'm not capturing you know really any half tones with this particular image, but um, it's just kind of when I decided to pull out the camera and, and get going on this. So I got four screens I got to burn. And we'll just run that through real quick and then I'll do a little, you know, fast forward action on that. And uh, I'll take a little bit of time after that to to show you the uh, the wiring. I'm going to be putting a link to the wiring diagram that I've got for this. And so um, so you have that information also. Um, it's nothing, you know, too fancy. It's basically, you know, I've got a, a light switch here, which does my safe lights. I've got another switch here, turns my vacuum on, and then my third switch is my LEDs, and uh, that's on a timer. So it's nothing too extravagant, um, you know, I think just about anybody could do it who's got the patience and a little bit of, you know, know-how, so it doesn't take much. Um, so yeah, I'll put a, a link to my, my wiring diagram, and so you have that, and uh, you know, the LED strips that I purchased, I'll put a link for those, and... Um, and so you can do your own. Let's get to it. So um, let's take a look at this back end. This is actually the bottom of the cabinet. I think I lied to you earlier and said the other side was the bottom. Nope, this is the bottom. Um, so basically what I what I did is I cut, a, um, the, the whole bottom just kind of comes out anyways. Um, that's how it was manufactured. It has some screws in the corners that kind of hold this bottom in place, which is ideal, it worked perfect. Um, because I ended up cutting with my grinder a slit right across um, the reason I can't remove the whole panel is because my my L channel is glue, uh, secured to the top. There's one of the screw heads coming through holding the L channel. There's another one. So um, so I can't really remove that because that would drop the L channel. That would, you know, it's all siliconed and glued together on this end. Um, so I cut a slit here to allow myself some access to all the electrical inside. And so I've got a couple more screws I've got to work on. Bulbs in here. So, um, here's my old, whoa, old fluorescents. I guess I had nowhere to put them. I forgot I even had these. Um, these were, these are black light fluorescents and that's kind of what I used to use. Um, but I don't use them anymore. So, um, as you can see here, this is one of the drawers or the shelves. It's on its side. And uh, I'll try to get a closer look. We can get some light on the situation and we'll kind of take a look inside. All right, check it out. So we have the shelving here that I was talking talking about. This particular cabinet had three shelves in it. So I repurposed those. Um, I mentioned earlier that I had them screwed together. And that's basically what you can see here. That's the end of the one shelf screwed into the next and so on. Um, I, this is, so the carriage bolts I was also talking about earlier that's kind of holding the shelving up. Uh, that's all it is. It's basically those three carriage bolts 
one on each end, one in the middle. I did end up tacking this L channel here. Uh, it might be a little bit overkill, but but what I found is, you know, it's a lot easier to slide out on this, you know, on this L channel here. So if I want to, if I need to get to the drivers or get to the, any of the electrical to work in it, I can actually slide this thing out. Well, here, what we have here is we have two drivers. They're LED drivers, and that's what controls the LED strips. In the link, I'll provide the PDF with the with the um, wiring schematic and I kind of already did all the calculations and figured out you know what drivers you need to run the amount of you know footage when it comes to the LEDs um, so if you just kind of follow the two drivers that I purchased and the links to there um, along with the LED strips you'll be all right um, there's different ways to wire the system you can wire it in series or in parallel but um, I did what made the most sense as far as the power and demand and everything so um, and and also to get the most consistent light along your LED strips so um, so it basically runs these two drivers um, they have AC coming into them and these two these two drivers are controlled on the same switch um, slash timer which you know you saw earlier in the front um, so there's my timer all the way on the back end and the switch next to that controls the timer so as soon as i hit that on switch my ac comes into these drivers and then um and then it provides dc voltage from the driver to your led light so the two bug lights uh the safe lights that you can um check out your screen before you burn it um those are on that middle switch or the first switch i'm sorry so those are all both on a switch and then uh, the third switch on there controls that's the back end of that plug the receptacle um, and that's what i have my uh, vacuum unit plugged into so anytime i hit the switch uh, the power is provided for that receptacle and um, and then so the compressor comes on and off with that switch i do have a terminal strip back there that just kind of made my wiring a little cleaner and easier um, and so I'll have that also in the drawing as you can see um, you don't necessarily have to use a terminal strip like that I like it because it just keeps everything clean and uniformed and um, just easier to wrap your mind around so rather than just a whole bunch of wire nuts and um, more rat's nests there's plenty of that in here already so so yeah I won't I won't spend a whole lot of time going through you know each each wire basically it just like I said looks like a rat's nest and and uh, it would be too hard to follow so you can see all this in the design in the schematic and that'll get you to where I'm at with this um, the LED strips are adhesive on the back and so basically that's kind of why I put this extra sheeting I did paint this this is just basically sheet metal um, and I painted it white, just spray painted it. So it has a better, you know, reflection, I guess. I didn't want to have the sheet metal, you know, um, causing all kinds of weird, uh, reflections coming up off of the LEDs, you know, so I figured you, white would just be more uniformed, um, as far as the spectrum and the light goes. So that's basically it. That's the inside of this thing. Alright, so if you made it to this part of the video, you might really be considering building your own light box. So I wanted to go over a couple of tools that you would need. Um, a grinder is a must-have. You know, I cut in, I had to cut into the shell in, in several places. Um, so you'd want a grinder. Uh, if you don't have one, get one from maybe Harbor Freight. I'm sure they, you know, they're not too much from there. Um, you also want a grinder if you end up, um, you know, for cutting your L channel, the aluminum inside. Um, you know, just various places. I used it on the frame uh, to cut my 45s and weld everything together. Um, like I said, a lot of people aren't going to have a welder, but I do have another solution. Um, you know, I had these in my junk drawer, just these little L brackets. So, you know, if you have the grinder and you have some one inch square channel, you could essentially just cut that, you know, cut a 45 or you can, you know, just kind of cut one longer and butt the other end into it and uh, just use these brackets and some uh, self tappers to go right into that metal and hold that together you know all you probably have to do is seal the joints 
I'd probably go with putting one on each side. Maybe find something a little bit thicker and more substantial. So, so yeah, these uh, these L brackets are you know a great solution for you know making your lid. So if you don't have a welder, use one of those. Um, and what else do we need? We need a drill. So uh, these little rocker switches that I put in, you know, I believe the hole's like half inch or something. It'll say on them, but you know these rocker switches, a couple bucks from Home Depot, and basically you just have to drill your holes. Uh, for where the rocker switches go in and you know of course I got where my carriage bolts were going in so I uh, definitely need a drill um, you know to, for yourself tappers and all that and um, so yeah basically I think those are the two necessities the grinder and the drill and a little bit of a uh, uh, maybe some wire strippers to strip the wiring down you can all, always use a knife for that but I, ideally you know a cheap pair of wire strippers uh, is going to come in super handy and um, I think that's it. You know, as far as the build goes, if you have any questions, you know, hit the uh, comment section and I'll, I'll answer those questions. You know, don't forget to to do the the subscription and ring that bell, man. That's going to help me tremendously help get this off the ground. So, um, yeah, hit that subscription, ring the bell. Um, and if you want to stick around a few more minutes, I'm going to show you my little cabinet here that I, I got on Craigslist also. This is my drying cabinet, so I got my screens down below. Um, I got a fan that I put on through the back and I'll just take a few minutes to show you that and, uh, and So you got something to, to put your stand on that or to put your light box on that's actually functional and serves the purpose and uh, Perfect perfect spot to have a little drying rack for your for your screen. So let's take a quick look at that and that's it All right, so as you can see, it's nothing too fancy. It's just a little cabinet I found on Craigslist and through it uh, took the shelf out and I kind of installed my own little makeshift shelving that'll kind of hold up the uh, the screens and I could fit uh, six screens in there and it actually I, I cut a section and we'll, we'll go to the back uh, but I did cut a section out of the back so that I could put my my heater slash fan to the back of it and I can have circulating air in there which will speed up the uh, emulsion drying process so yeah it's just a real basic cabinet and um, it wasn't quite long enough in the back, so I kind of built it with these two by fours, extending, extending the leg length so that you know my light box sits, sits and is supported all the way on uh, through the back. So you know I threw a little shelf back there for my vacuum pump, uh, which runs the 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 vacuum blanket. And um, so this is what I was talking about in the back, just you know little Stanley heater with a fan. This thing works pretty well. Um, I've got my little vent slash grate, you know, you could pick up at any supply store. I got my grate facing down so that the light's not kind of coming into the coming into the back. Um, I do normally have like a flap here, you know, just a piece of cardboard or something that'll that'll plop down when I'm not using the fan so no light gets in there. Um, and it kind of also covers part of this fan so that, you know, there's more shadow than light kind of coming into the back. So. So uh, I'll show you on the inside. I gotta, you know, turn off some lights here and turn, this, turn on the safe light because I do have, I do currently have three screens and they're drying, um, and I don't want to ruin the the emulsion on those. So let me hit the light real quick. Take a quick look. All right, lights off. Got my safe light on. Let's take a look. So I got these three screens currently drying. I got my one Newman roller on the bottom. Yeah, I still use the Newman rollers. Um, and I've got the static frames above that, some aluminum static frames. And so uh, these are doing their thing in here, drying. Um, if I needed to speed up the process, I could just throw that fan on. Um, that, that Stanley fan I showed you has a heater and a fan, and it does both at the same time if you need it. So right now, I'm not really in a big hurry, so I don't have it on, but I could, you know, dry these screens in about an hour or two with that with that heater and fan on if I needed to. So um, it's pretty basic, you know, I'm a big fan of the L channel. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but you know, I've got six positions here. One, two, three, four, five, and then six. And uh, so I've got it set on, you know, this one corner and kind of the opposite corner in the back there. And, uh, nothing really in the middle you know i could have built some fancy shells but that l channel worked just fine and you know they really don't have a lot of play you know they'll stay where they need to so um so i didn't have to build anything too fancy just some l channel and uh you know an old cabinet from craigslist i'm sure you could find these for 10 20 bucks 
somebody's giving one away so you know just repurpose so if you're doing things on a budget uh, like I do and you don't want to spend a ton of money then uh, this is the way to go so yeah I appreciate you guys um, watching the video hit that uh, you know if you have any questions you know comment below hit that like button subscribe ring that bell and we'll keep these going all right man appreciate it